Welcome to the first entry in my Magello journal. This is where I'll be trying out individual colors from the Mission Gold Pure Pigment set. The plan is to do a couple of these each month until I either run out of pages or run out of steam, whichever comes first. I'm using a B watercolor sketchbook, the 8x8 size. It's 100% cotton and 140 pound cold press. This is my second B watercolor journal, and I think I prefer this size over the 5x7. In my opinion, it's a reliable and reasonably priced cotton paper option. Or at least it was. Since my last one, availability has been sporadic and the prices have gone up. This front page explains the book's purpose. Using a mechanical pencil, I lightly laid out the text, then came in with a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen. On the company's website, they're described as having pigmented India ink that is permanent, waterproof, and light fast. The SB on the end of the barrel indicates the tip is soft brush. I like both their brush and soft brush tips, although I find the soft brush a little more useful in my projects. I use them mostly for line work and that's what I recommend them for. This one is black, but I'd like to have these in more colors, at least the grays, because that's what I would use the most. Actually, the range of pens and markers out there intimidates me. There are too many styles and brands. It's a whole world in itself. But I found that I like these, so that's what I'm sticking with for now. But if you have a favorite, then please share in the comments. This is Magello's Fusion 33 Plastic Palette. In the previous session, I mentioned how much I like the design. The size and shape of the wells, in comparison to pans, feels more brush-friendly, I guess. I briefly considered doing a loose watercolor floral for this, but it seems like there are several new LWF videos up every day from better artists, so I went with a simple multicolor background. This is a Sakura Koi watercolor brush pen in gray. 
but it's different from the Faber-Castell in that it's dye-based and blendable. And it's neither waterproof nor light fast. One of the first colors in this set to catch my eye was red-brown. The pigment code is PBR25, chemically known as benzamidazolone brown. And does that not sound like an unpleasant condition? Sorry, I can't go out tonight. I've got the benzamidazolone browns. Yes, again. Thanks. I hope so, too. Notable for its high transparency, PBR25 is also used for Daniel Smith's Permanent Brown and Winsor & Newton's Indian Red Deep. I washed the palette with toothpaste like many people recommend, but it's okay. The beading will eventually go away through use. There's something very satisfying about watching what was once pristine become worn and stained. I almost can't wait until the entire area is riddled with faint remnants of color. Wabi Sabi is the appreciation of things that are imperfect, and I think that applies here. Check out those mixing results. Those are some gorgeous deep shades. I don't normally use the backside of watercolor paper, regardless of the brand. But I really wanted to use this layout, and since the left side was going to be swatching and mixing, I figured it would be fine. And it was. I like how in light washes, red-brown becomes quite pinkish. The painting is intended to showcase the chosen color, in this case red-brown. And what better way to show it off than with a rack of bags? I won't go over each color combination, but I will describe the purpose that each of these bags may have. First is the Hanging Out with Friends shoulder bag. It has plenty of room for snacks, 
because you've never forgotten that one time Lainey didn't tell you it was a potluck. Now you're always prepared to whip out a container of trail mix, telling everyone it's your special sweet and salty survival salad. Second is the everyday errand bag. Just big enough for keys, phone, bank card, hand sanitizer, pen, a nail file, and the receipts from all of your spur-of-the-moment art supply purchases, which get dumped en masse into the trash because you don't want a reminder of how much it costs to be an artist. Third is the mobile painting crossbody bag. Large enough to accommodate a 5x7 sketchbook, a 12 half pan watercolor palette, a travel brush pouch, and a water bottle. Is there anything as intriguing as that person who pulls out a sketchbook and starts painting away? It doesn't matter if it's good or not. The fact that they had the guts to do it in public makes them practically superheroes. Fourth is the basic overnight bag. It holds PJs, house slippers, and your Magic the Gathering aggro deck. Because nothing says BFFs like trying to annihilate each other on top of a coffee table. I thought I was done, but the piece was missing something. So back in I went to add a touch of depth. Because there's nothing sadder than a flat bag. I'm happy to share this exploration of Mission Gold's Red Brown. Hopefully it made going through a case of the Benzamidazolone Browns worthwhile. Until next time. Remember to pack extra undies in your overnight bag and stay artsy-fartsy, my friends. <laughs>